Kia ora. My name is Tony Wallace and I'm doing a short video today on getting your Erlang environment ready for use. Uh, Erlang comes out the box, uh, you, you've done the start up, you've, uh, my little fox terrier, hello this is Angel, anyway, Erlang, Erlang comes out the box and you want to go and use it and just not quite ready for use is it so today I'm going to show you how to set up your Erlang for use and um, yeah well, let's get into it okay this is a screen capture of a directory structure for a Erlang project you can see that we have a source directory that controls uh, holds the source code for this project. An eBin directory that contains the compiled code, and the dependencies directory. Uh, this contains the directories this, of all the applications which this particular project requires in order to function. And by including them in a single directory like this, you hold your dependencies with your project and keep everything nice and tight. Now, as you said, compiled files are called beams. Dependencies. Each one of these is a dependency and if we have a look at Cowboy, this is the web server that we use uh, with our Erlang, well, with my Erlang programs in term has dependencies it's got the same structure as as the original project got a few bit more things in it it's got a test directory it's got some examples it's got some documentation it's got a, a git con controller git directory and then the dependencies are sim linked back to the top level to keep everything nice and tight Hey, direct structure of Merlin directory. Hello, well, first thing we're going to look at here are the problems that you get when you run Erlang straight out the box. The first one we're going to do is the editor. So we're going to try and edit a source code file. And what we see is there's, I just resize that to fit in the capture area, make it a single window. And as you can see in this uh, Emacs window, there is no syntax highlight, highlighting whatsoever. Syntax highlighting does come with um, Erlang, but it does need to be set up. Okay, the second problem is this. We'll start early and we'll try and run Hello Server 1. I can't find it. That's the second problem we've got. We've already looked at the directory structure. We know that program is there, but it simply won't run. And the third problem is if we compile that program, There we exit. The compiled code has been put into the project directory, 
not into the even or compiled code directory. Okay, so we're searching now for the Erlang installation that's been put into your system. Yeah. Yep. This here is the .em Emacs file with the required paths installed to load your Emacs mode. These are the paths that we found in our previous find statements. And this is the, these are the commands that need to be added to your Erlang system now emacs dot emacs file so that syntax highlighting um, takes place. Okay, so now that we've reloaded our source code with the dot uh, emacs file set up, you can see that it's um, Erlang aware and it's syntax highlighted for the different colours so much much nicer okay well now we're going to have a look at the dot erlang file uh, we've opened it up in the emacs editor in the uh, users root directory as we can see in the top here and there is a set of um, Erlang commands in this file here. Now the first one writes a message to Standera saying, you know, telling us that the .erlang file is indeed running. The second line here adds a the compiled code directory to the path that is uh, used by the um, Erlang interpreter. And this, these lines here, these two lines here, they add the um, EBIN or the compiled code directories for every dependency into the um, into the path as well. This, uh, as we can see here, we locate all the um, directories inside the dependency directory and then we generate a path with the file name join function that starts off with you know the current directory followed by depths followed by the um, dependency that's um, currently under consideration and inside that the e eBIN directory and that X here is instantiated from this list of depths, this section between the square brackets being an Erlang list comprehension. Just what I did wrong was I forgot to start the Erlang interpreter. So if we uh, do that again. Okay, so just put that into your home directory and um, you will find all your dependencies when you go to run your Erlang command. So let's just uh, try that in the project that we're considering.
Okay, and so remember last time we tried to run that um, Earl Miner Start Hello Server 1, it crashed and died. This time it started up the web server and it's looking good. And there we go, hello. All works, go back to you can see that the progress messages have all been running. So, as you can see, now that we've got the .erlang file set up, everything runs a lot smoother. There is one final thing we have to show, and that's the .make file, and we will do that now. The screen here shows the emake file, which is this file here, which tells how Erlang should make a source code, um, make a program from source code. And so if you have a look at this one here, everything that is in the subdirectory source is compiled with the options that are shown in the square brackets. And they include an include directory, where typically Erlang um, records that are defined, and an out directory, where the uh, compiled binaries are stored. So this should go at the top of every one of your project directories. So if I do an ls stretch for my sandbox, We see emake file right there. Okay. And it's just a thing that you copy into your projects as you work on them. Now this allows us to do this. And you can see there's a program called record match that needed to recompile. So if we put that with alongside some of the other things that we've uh, been doing, there's a compile, there's a, we'll do a run. I can't remember what it's called. There's a test run. And there we go. Put that into the viewing area about area of our um, screen capture. Nicely laid out. Done. Well, I hope you've um, learned a bit about setting your Erlang environment up for uh, useful production, or well, useful development, and uh, yeah, uh, have it. That's about it really, isn't it?